Hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Kelvin from Make3DComics.com and BlackSunComics.com, and today I'll show you how to add your photos to scenes in Daz Studio. Stay tuned. I'd like to tell you a quick story about what inspired this video. My next door neighbors moved out about a month ago, and no one has moved into their place since then, at least at the time of the recording of this video. That means that the unoccupied house beside us has a lawn that has gone, quite frankly, straight to hell. I know, hashtag first world problems, but it's really kind of gotten out of hand. There's some sort of beast weed growing that's almost as tall as me, and I'm about 5'10". At first I was annoyed, but then I started to think about how could I use this to my advantage. Then the imagination started going. I started picturing some sort of strange alien planet with bizarre plant life, maybe flesh-eating plant life, and the people who had to explore this place for whatever reason, and at that moment the deal was sealed. I decided I would create a scene in Daz Studio using photos of the horror show lawn that was growing beside me and use them as the backdrop. Now, I wanted to get close-up shots of the weeds in my neighbor's lawn, so I decided to use my digital SLR for this. Uh, I'm using a Canon T3i, and I also have a 60mm lens that has macro capabilities. I'll leave affiliate links to the camera gear that I've used in the video description below, so you can check it out for yourself. If you want to do something similar, you don't have to have a digital SLR in order to achieve it. You could probably do it with your smartphone. And depending how good the quality of the camera is on your smartphone will determine your results. So with that said, let's begin. So this is the image that I decided on finally. And I just took it into Photoshop and I added a hue and saturation layer. And I adjusted the levels. And uh, again, I'm looking for that alien look. So I didn't want it to be green. That's what people are used to. I wanted it to have this kind of look. And I save that out. And so now I hop on over to, so yeah, sorry, this is the image that I'm gonna use as the backdrop. So now I'm hopping over to Daz. This is the character that I've created in Daz. And as you can see, there's nothing behind him. And I'm going to use the image that I had in Photoshop as the background for this scene here. So first thing I'll do is hide this character. I'm just in my scene tab and I'm turning the eyeballs off on the, the clothing and the character. So you, could see it, you could see everything a bit easier if I just start from a clean slate. So the first thing I will need to do is to create a new primitive. So I'm just coming over to the create menu at the top, create, and then you wanna select new primitive. So I select that and then I get this create new primitive dialog box. And mine has defaulted to plain. Yours might be one of these other ones. You'll see there's a few choices, cube, cylinder, cone, sphere, torus, and plane. What we want for this is a, a plane. And the origin point, I'll leave it at the world center. Primary access, I'll leave it as the default. And I've done this before, so yours might say one by one. I put mine to four by six. You can choose whatever number you want. You can always change this later. So I'm gonna hit accept. And nothing spectacular happens. It's not obvious right away, but if, you, if you're if you in your scene tab and you scroll to the bottom, you'll notice that this plane now appears. So let me just adjust my camera here. Okay, so you can see it a bit better. Actually, I'll go over to uh, perspective view. So there it is. And now I want to rotate it so that it stands as a backdrop. So I'll select it. And then I'm going to come over to my parameters tab over here. And I'm going to rotate. So let's rotate, I believe, along not the Y axis. I always get these mixed up. X axis. So I'm going to rotate it. Let's just change this right to 90 degrees. I want it to be straight. And then I'm going to move it up. So what I want to do is move it up so that it's level with the, the ground. So I'm just going to eyeball it here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Cool. So there's my plane. 
Now what I need to do is import this picture into this plane. So I'm going to select my surfaces tool right over here. Come to my surfaces tab. I'm going to the editor tab. So if you're on presets or shader baker or whatever else might be there, just go to your editor tab and select plane. Once you're there, what you're looking for is this diffuse color. And more specifically, what you're looking for is this carrot underneath the diffuse color. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to browse. So th this is where I saved my image. So basically what you'll want to do is find the location where you save the image that you want to use as the backdrop. I saved mine to my desktop in this vlog folder and that's the image there, final. And then I'm going to open it. And it appears, right? That That's pretty simple. But as you can see, it's kind of stretched out. So my measurements were a bit wrong. So let's go back to the parameters tab. And I'm going to scale. I believe it's scale Y. No, that's not it. Scale X. That's what I want. Okay, so that looks a bit better. That looks more like a four by six aspect ratio. So there's my image. Now I want to put the camera in front of this. So I'm gonna to go to my scene tab and I'm gonna turn on all the elements for my character. Just close, it was the suit and then Genesis. Oops. So you'll notice as I zoom in, I need to move the plane back. Let's go to my scene tab. The plane is still selected. I'll go to parameters. And what I want is translation. Uh, translate the Y axis, good. I want that like so. And now let's compose our shot. So I want to zoom in on him more. And I want to see more of the vegetation. So let's do this and move it down some, maybe around here. Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, there we go. That's good enough. So you get the idea. So now I can render out this image and it has this alien plant life in the background. I didn't have to load a 3D model, so it saves uh, resources and that's the main reason why you, why and that's the main reason why you would want to use a technique like this because it's much easier to load an image into Daz instead of load a whole 3D model. So that ends this week's tutorial. Hopefully you learned something you can use. If you haven't done so already, please visit BlackSunComics.com where you can download a free preview of my comic Black Sun The Longest Night. It was illustrated entirely using Daz Studio and Photoshop, so please check it out. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and share it on your social media feeds. Be sure to check out some of the other Daz Studio tutorial videos on this channel. And until next time, take care. Peace.